Right, well, good evening and welcome to show 29, I think it is, John. I'm Simon Lovesey, the founder of Restart Satan, joined by John Emmett. Yeah, I'm John Emmett, and it's amazing to think, absolutely amazing to think we're nearly at show 30. <laughs> yeah, and such a variety amount of content as we, we ebb and flow and change, but uh, I think the, the three stages that we came up with, well, over a year ago, still very relevant. So, um, from the uh, full-on social distancing to the uh, hopefully we're moving into the limited social distancing. Yeah, I mean, it very much feels like we're in the or starting to be in the third phase at the moment, which I think is just such a such a good thing. And uh, hopefully we'll continue to step in the right direction. So our real focus is club sailing and, and grassroots. But I think in this Olympic year, it's also nice to, to know what's going on at the elite end of the sport as well. Yeah, so uh, lots of changes. So, uh, yeah, that's trying to prove so, so the the big the big event um is, is the finn gold cup so for people who don't know that's the finn world championships it was actually dominated um by the kiwis um so the uh, new zealanders andy malone and josh jr actually took first and third place in porto and uh, Josh Jr. previously has won uh, the Finn Gold Cup, first ever Kiwi to do that, and Andy Maloney um, has won this time. And I think what's really interesting is... Uh, sorry, there's a bit of repeat going on. Yeah, sorry, it's me. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, sorry, okay. so, you know, fantastic, because uh, although it's a single-handed class, uh, you would argue they're the best two-person team, having having taken uh, gold and bronze. And quite crucially, if we move on to the next slide, um, they've just come back from the America's Cup. Oops. So, uh, that, you know, that's uh, amazing to do that multitasking. And the other place, I mean, there was a place um, given to, I believe, African as well as European, but the other place of huge importance went to Joan, uh, who you can see there um, being interviewed by myself in Lanzarote. Uh, in Lanzarote, he um, actually won the regatta, so he was beating uh, the current, crikey, uh, world European and Olymp uh, Olympic test event champion was there, uh, his training partner. So he was obviously somebody to look for, and it's really, really nice to see this young man get a place to go to Olympic Games on what is probably his last opportunity to do so, at least in the Finn class. So. Uh, again, Portugal really being the, the go-to country, and we talked about that a little bit on the, on the last show. So they lost two days, uh, but that was purely due to wind, and that's a problem anyway, <laughs> even yeah, in normal yeah. times. Uh, be, so yeah. the, the figures I've put up uh, for this particular show are actually the daily uh, the, the, the deaths, uh, which, which sounds a bit morbid, but actually it's probably the best way of understanding the, the current situation of any pandemic. I mean, there's a lag there because unfortunately people get COVID and get very ill and some don't survive, but that's the best way to see what the pandemic looks like. And the next big regatta uh, for all the current Olympic classes will be the Lance Regatta uh, hosted at um, Medenblik in the Netherlands. So you can see the, the Netherlands have plateaued, if you look at the scale on the left, for quite a long time. Uh, with the number of uh, deaths in the sort of 20s, 30s, something like that. And it's actually the same with the United Kingdom. If you look, unfortunately, the scale on the left is is very different to the scale of the um, of the Dutch graph. But we are now right at the bottom. We've, you can see there's really two big um, waves which have been shown there, depending how you want to classify them. But we're really in a very, very good situation now. And that that obviously filters through to the to the steps and, and things gradually opening up. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So uh, jumping around. So just we just whizzed through a little slide there. I was just going to say I'm still um, so, doing the sorry. <laughs> the restart talks. Uh, this is with a very good friend of mine, Tim Hulse, who's the Ilka. That's uh, formerly the Laser. He's the Ilka UK training officer. And one of the things that they tried so hard to do was get back to doing um, regional training. So people were training close to home and, and it makes a lot of sense for, for 20 people plus. Uh, I think that particular weekend they had 40 um, training close to home and then one coach traveling. So it was really nice to have that chat. So it's not only the shows we do, we are doing interviews with classes. And I think in the near future, we should have the international moth and probably the topper. So that's two ends of the uh, or the single handed spectrum, I think. Yeah, yeah, and just jumping through the steps. Well, yeah, we've had the 29th of March. This is all going to plan. Sailing sort of resumed. Lots of activity. 
Um, then step two, 12th of April, that was opening of accommodation, wasn't it? Oops, why would you finger well, the, the key thing is that we've got a special pop-up show uh, on yeah. the 20th, which is when step three comes in. And uh, that's actually quite a big game changer for an awful lot of sailing events. So that's, that's really good news. Um, and hopefully people are going to be encouraged to do lots of sailing home rather than uh, use the freedom of movement to, to go on holiday. <laughs> the time for staycation, maybe. Yeah, so the UK is a very good place to sail over the, the yeah. summer, over the European summer. So we're jumping around. Right, so I think um, time to introduce John, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Come, come on through, John. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good evening. Um, yeah, it's nice to join you all. And uh, yeah. Bit of an embarrassing picture there, but anyway, it's, uh, that's, that was my um, my uh, lockdown haircut. So yeah, yeah. it's but it's actually a lot less embarrassing than my hot down, my lockdown haircut, which has now been recorded for posterity on YouTube. So yeah. you're doing okay, John. But, but this was quite that. a quite a famous award you were uh, presented with. <laughs> Yes, um, I was. I was probably as surprised as anybody would be. Um, it was so. It was. It sent the. the it, it was for the the biggest, you know, for a, a big contribution to sailing over the last decade. And um, like I said at the time, we we feel we're just sort of doing what we do. We're plodding from you know one week to another, from one year to another. We're still going. We're still doing more and more events. But as the as the um, project that we do has has grown and gone into other areas of sailing, and then maybe more students of ours have or sailors of ours have gone on to careers or degrees related in some ways to the sailing industry we seem to have become a bit of a a model for what other schools could do and well, maybe well, i think i think you've created a snowball in a in a very good way yeah yeah i mean it's so yes it is and it feels very much like a snowball which is still growing as well so th there's where we are at the moment is that everyone sort of knows maybe some of the older students like Montel who got his opportunity on Hugo Boss and then um, another one, Sean Williams, who sailed across the Atlantic on Scarlet Oyster, the one that we couldn't get back because he then went on and did the, I think he went and did Grenada Week. He did all sorts of different things out there as well. Um, and, and we just, in the end, could hardly get him back. Uh, but he's now doing an engineering degree close to uh, ocean marine systems who are people who have very kindly supplied parts for us for for, uh, for Scaramouche. Uh, we've got someone else, Javon, who's now down in uh, UKSA at the moment. He's doing a Supios hospitality course, which is what he always wanted to do. So there's been that. Then others have gone into the media side of it, partly because they've done lots of interviews and that sort of thing. And so it really is kind of snowballing in that way. And, and I, I think the main thing we've done, I think, is probably show that the amount of goodwill within sailing is so high that if you bother to sort of try and get involved and you bother to try and take the opportunities, they're just there. And it's actually, in a way, it's kind of almost, it's been quite, although it's been a big time commitment, obviously, on my part, and there's been an element of, I suppose, a bit of risk early on and that kind of thing, it's actually been very straightforward to tap into the opportunities and the goodwill of the sailing community so oh that's so good to hear and this, this is going moosh in most of these pictures is that correct this is this is actually riot so there's um ah. that's, uh, so yeah scaramouche is is launched is, is actually out tomorrow and, uh, and and over the weekend so this boat here kind of represents i think the best part of what we do it's a it's a 20 no it's more than 20 years old now it's Four, nearly 40 years old. Uh, an intro 22. It was the 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 boat before the Hunter Sonata uh, was was designed and, and used. And essentially, with that boat, it, it demonstrates a lot of things because they've done all the kind of normal things of the filling and fairing of it. But they've got absolutely obsessed by the IRC rating um, of that. So they've added bow sprits. They've taken bow sprits off again. They've had symmetrical spinnakers, asymmetrics. I think they've got about 12 sails for that one boat, wow. I think. Um, I mean, every single manoeuvre they do... Come on, lads! ...leads to a sail going up or down. And they're, they're, yeah, they're hoping in that boat to just go around the Isle of Wight. Woohoo! They're hoping to. Yeah, boys! But the thing about that is... Yeah. Yeah. about that? That's actually interesting. Uh, yeah, so we, we just... Uh, well, we just happened upon... Epic this, start, lads. Uh, it was in one of the... You do not mess with the great city. It's called IRC Records. And it's this great initiative where... 
Because, you know, for us, we do the round Come on, lads. Trips with several boats every year. And we set up time and we work out, you know, obviously we get a position to on the racing. And, uh, yeah, boys. Courses around Europe, um, and the Isle of Wight is, is one of them in the UK. And essentially, Epic start, you just your time. You register, you get you your do time, not and the you pick your time, and you go and do that course almost as a time trial. And at the end of it, you come on, by your time, by your rating. Now, um, most of what they've done on Riot, as well as trying to get into second, has been to keep the rating as well. Yeah, boys. So they saw this. There's a boat which they find properly inspirational. Yeah, Redshift, the uh, epic start line. And former students, fast. You do not mess with the Greg City on, on Redshift. And uh, we saw that they were interested in it, so we thought, well, this must Come be on, a lads. serious uh, thing. And so, yeah, they're going up to do it this Three, weekend. Two, we got, well, well, one. Of course. Woo -hoo! That's what saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, boys. So it's great to see how inspiring, you know, the, the, the students have had and where, where they've taken epic sailing. Epic start really lads. Been sailing has been. You do not mess with the great city. It has, and uh, I mean, if you take, you can see the actuals now on the on the video, and they on, lads. again are another, I suppose, most examples of the past we've got into are good examples of what can be achieved. Way, but the actuals, yeah, boys, have, 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 have yeah. Been phenomenal for for them all because they, first of all, there is the epic the, start the lads provides a fleet of um, of do not mess with the great the city. Academy. And that's run, you know, again by very decorated sailors who think, you know, they've got Come on, uh, lads. Bedford really sort of lead, leads on that. But then they get in these really high quality coaches, you know, Woo -hoo! Uh, Harry Blow and yeah, you know, Marie really like that. So, yeah. who have all, you know, been through, that, through the system. And they get them as coaches. And, and that just leads to a very high standard of sailing, a very high standard of racing. And they, they're just learning all the time. When you've got expertise like that on board, they're just continually learning and then there's the opportunity to win the use of a fully funded boat for the season and then that means of course they get a gateway into the whole of the actual season which is a full-on calendar as well where yeah they're racing there sometimes against you know for yeah olympic champions former olympic champions uh ben ainsley was in one of the races laurie smith does those races as well um, and then again from there so many other opportunities come along so there's one picture, I think, which we saw before, where their onboard coach is, is, uh, is uh, Gonzalo Ribeiro, who, they, who sort of saw them through actuals. He then volunteered to come on as a coach, and he did coach with some of our former students. But then, of course, we, some of ours have got, more interest, have got quite interested in 420s, and, of course, he's a very, very obviously, amazing 420 coach. So then that's led into, hopefully, further coaching happened then. COVID's really hit that idea a little bit, but there's so many sort of areas where all these little opportunities, all these offshoots come. Um, and yeah, so it's been great. And, you know, again, through Etchells, we've met, you know, there's someone called Sean Froelich, who has got one of the boats. He has a big charity that he runs and we were able to get funding from that. So the thing about it is it's all just sort of fitted together more by accident than design, I think. But I suppose that's what sailing is all about, is making those connections. Um, several of our students go on as crew members um onto other people's actuals as well you know, there's always someone who wants a fourth person or or, or or you know so yeah they've they've just really enjoyed that and i and think that, i think it's easy to forget that actually keelboat sailing is a it's a really big part of our our sport and we've done an awful lot of these shows and i actually feel we've been been a bit remiss not to not to get the keelboats on earlier because it's just such an important part of the sport yeah, I think it's amazing part of the sport where real, I think connections can be made long term because our our co the, the key aim of what, what we do with Scaramouche is to try and get it so that the students who do it uh, stay in the sport longer term. Perfect. And, and with uh, with actuals, that's definitely possible. Uh, there's, there's I mean, Camillo now sails with, you know, on, on a, an actuals called Plant Hunter. Um, and that's, that's the boat he sails on, you know, it doesn't need any input from us whatsoever. The, the others who are on there now, they're doing their actual season. But then again, we've got the there's the Dragon set up in Portugal. That came by because uh, because of again our connection with with them um, with actuals where there's 8D sailing. You know, Pedro has set up 8D sailing out there. And again, he made a boat available 
all we had to do was to go out there and it was it was actually cheaper for us, for us to get to Portugal than it was to get to the Isle of Wight and the <laughs> flight was the same price as the red jet ticket um, wow. so that was an interesting one for us but yeah that's been so there's been connections been made there and then and then so suddenly you are they, they all kind of feel at home going there now because I've been there so often Good. And Portugal has just been a go-to place in the in the recent uh, recent times as well. In fact, I, I actually thought I was going to be doing a bit of commentary for the for the Dragons when they were there, but uh, you know it's been more difficult for multi-crew boats um, to stay on the water um, than it has been for for single-handers. But it does look like everything's opening up. Yeah, well, we really hope it does because the the thing in the thing when when we go to Portugal is we've got our 420 crew are quite keen to get involved in the 420 events out there. Then there's the laser, the the, the ones who do lasers, they want to be out there as well. Kai and Jaden and, and Christopher. Um, and the, again, the good thing is that setup there where they can just hire really high quality lasers and 420s and then get involved. And we're just kind of desperate to go back there. And the fact that they're when they're there, they're just seeing all these other athletes at the top of their game, which is you know, hugely inspiring for them. So, you know, we're really desperate to get back out there, really. Good. Right, let's sort of move on. So, so that moving Thank on. Thank you very, very yeah. much for the time, John. It, it's really yeah. inspirational. And I, I think you, you do yourself a disservice that you definitely deserved your award. Well, thank you, very, thank you very much. Good man. Definitely. <laughs> right. So the uh, the Selden Cell Juice, well, we call it a spring series, which actually the winter series carries on. The, the weather probably is more like winter at the moment. So uh, um, unfortunately, we're only able to get one event over the winter. So to carry on the series, we have the next one coming up at the end of the month, the Graffin Bell, um, and then follow possibly some other ones and ending with the Tiger Trophy, which was due to be in February now in March I'm not March in August so it's uh, uh, in these sort of adaptable times we're trying to make things happen <laughs> right so moving on to let's come up there Oops. Oh, God, I can't talk that quickly. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Computers are very sensitive today. It'll be the quickest show ever. Yeah. Um, so I, I feel it's really nice now to do the little bit of coaching at the end of each Restart Sailing show because I think the vast majority of us are back and we are back racing. Um, so any any input, John, or any questions, uh, very, very welcome. And I just think a lot of the time it's about getting the basics right and this is actually about thinking about the big picture and what's the most important thing on a day because it's very easy to get all tied up in the boat to boat tactics and keeping your lane and keeping in front of your rivals and these these things that you learn uh, a lot for the short course racing but strategy is the big picture and what you do in the absence of other boats and one of the things that we can predict unlike the weather or certainly more accurately is the current flow now, the slower your boat, obviously, um, the more important the current becomes because it's a, it's a ratio. But we have it with a strong current underneath us. We may struggle to actually get the starts off without the dreaded U flag or black flag catching people out. But on that first beat, if you're in a relatively slow boat and it, the current is, is strong, obviously, you want to go on the, the favoured side. And water, it's, um, if it was a person, it's, it's like a lazy person. It wants the easiest route. So water, generally speaking, is going to be flowing fastest where it's deepest. Um, so that means um, once everything is, is equal in terms of the tide times, that uh, offshore you will get uh, the, the strongest current flow generally speaking um, that it's not quite that simple because during the changeover uh, current will change inshore first but this very simple diagram shows a good example where the right hand side is going to be paying because the wind is in a, a constant direction and you have more favorable current on the right and it's just a friendly reminder that the ley lines become narrower when the current's underneath you because if you like the boat is is actually pointing closer to the wind in terms of the vmg you do and that by narrow ley lines i mean it's actually possible to go over the ley lines very easily especially if your focus is on other boats and the reason i say that is if you tack on the normal ley line uh, as in, so you're just pointing at the mark. If you have strong current underneath you, it will take you over and you end up reaching in. So it's it's a hard thing to judge. 
uh, because actually you need to tack so you're pointing below the mark and that's why if possible you get out early and sail the first beat before the first race in fact if possible you do a bit of the first beat before every race because we all know that um, associated with the tie times come up, will change so that's today's talk with uh, strategy versus tactics and i thought current is probably one of the the easiest things to research because you can get your tie tables out etc and look at that days or even weeks before your event right so next next week <laughs> yes yeah, so i've just highlighted it is actually next week so that's the right. 20th of may uh, but same place same times as normal and it's restart sailing show 30 so we have two guests not quite sure how this will work hopefully technology would be our friends we have yeah. uh, ben Big, harris yeah. and john tweedle but, uh, bigger bigger screen needed <laughs> yeah well i'm sure we can accommodate they were so keen to promote the europe class that they decided one person was just not enough yeah and amazing to see what they're doing in terms of yeah rejuvenating that class and uh, yeah i think very the target, vibrant the target is to hit 50 at the nationals and i think they're going to be pretty close we'll see how that goes yeah and obviously yep yeah, we, we move into well is it stage two next week isn't it? <laughs> uh it will be the third uh step yeah. Uh, I think uh, hopefully by then, uh, just a couple of days into it, things will be a lot clearer. Yeah. And things which aren't clear, we'll try and explain to the best of our ability. Yeah. So we look forward to that. So that's a special show next week, isn't it? <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much.